later on on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram I am blown away we are in Ephesians 4 you can't handle it but we're going to do it anyway you can't handle the truth <laughs> I forget that in the movie well no we're going to handle the truth but you guys I am so blown away that's why this is a spontaneous song based on the last two and a half hours of me looking at all the different translations of Ephesians 4, and uh, I got to say, uh, first of all, it's got the five-fold offices in it. This is 32 verses, and we're going to, you know, cut it in half, two parts to Ephesians 4, but I just got to read this and set it out there, So, and then we'll, we'll keep worshiping for a bit before Carl and I narrate. 
But verse 7 says, each one of us, however, has been given grace to be measured by the Messiah's bounty. Huh? Complete Jewish Bible. This is why it says, after he went up into the heights of heaven, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to mankind. Now this phrase, he went up, what can it mean if not that he first went down into the lower parts of the earth? God. Think of the power of the Son of God. The devil and the kingdom of darkness thought they were killing him. But he said, oh no, the glory of the Father is coming. <laughs> but he descended wow. into hell and took the keys of hell and death. Wow. Wow. And it says he led captivity captive, just so we can get it started on our stream today. Years ago, very clear teaching, they taught about Abraham's bosom, which is where the righteous Old Testament dead went. They were held, even the Jewish people understand, the righteous dead were held in Abraham's bosom. Because he led captivity captive, well, Abraham's bosom is empty today. <laughs> And Carla's going to read it later on, but yeah, oh yeah, we're not talking about purgatory Catholic stuff here. Oh, oh, it is. That's exactly right. They took it, stole it right out of there. But, but I was thinking that the Lord Jesus, our King of glory, led all the righteous dead. Further, one guy said, um, you got to remember what he sold. The, t the th There were two thieves on the cross. One was very foolish. He was probably cussing and carrying on and speaking against Jesus. The other one said, the other thief said, Lord, have mercy on me. And he trusted in the Lord. I go, oh my God. And so Jesus said, today you're going to be in paradise with me. See, he led captivity captive. There's a lot of different commentators say a lot of different things about verse 7 and 8, 9, and 10. But we're going to get into it. So let's, let's sing to our King of glory. Great and awesome are you, my King of glory. You led captivity captive. Great and awesome are you, my Jesus, King of glory. Everybody in, come on, go deep. Great and awesome are you, my King of glory. Salvation belongs to our God. Because of your great sacrifice and what you did when you rose from the dead and it says you ascended into heaven and sprinkled your blood on the heavenly ornaments and you created a new and living way into Abba Father's presence. What? What did you do, Lord? <laughs> Only the resurrected King of glory. could have descended, emptying out Abraham's bosom and then leading captivity captive, that he ascended into heaven, book of Hebrews, and sprinkled his blood. Let, let's, let's have a moment, you guys. Let's have a moment. Oh, my God. What you did for us, Lord, you opened a new and living way, which is worship and intercession. You opened a new and living way so every believer could do worship and intercession. Would you say, Ken, I couldn't hear you. I know, I'm going to repeat it. There's a new and living way by the blood of the Lamb that we can do worship and intercession and enter His courts with thanksgiving. His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. I mean, we are on to some these Pauline epistles. So I brought this song, All is for Your Glory, because what else could I do? All, all, all. By the way, my pastor friend Scott Schatzlein is on here right now. I was just at his church this weekend, and Scott is miracle boy. He was singing with me Kim Bollinger's song, Spirit Touch Your Church. We broke it out, didn't we? <laughs> Scott was singing, his wife was holding his mic, make us a house of prayer. This is the pastor, I can share it with you, that it was at a family picnic last June 
had a massive heart attack, fell over, and he was dead. He was gone for 20 minutes. But the Lord brought him back again so he could do revival and great awakening, right, Scott? <laughs> I did a, a morning training, 9.30 to 12. It was so powerful. And then we did Saturday night. Oh, man, we went deep. And then yesterday morning, we started doing Raise a Hallelujah, and the roof came off the place. <laughs> Then we did come alive and started praying for prodigals away from the Lord, and they were coming home. We had an altar full of people we anointed with oil with kids, adult children away from the Lord. It's so good, man. So I want to just say hey, this the, to uh, Scott, and then I see Steve Hunt is on here, man. Wow. We couldn't even sniff his presence without the blood of Jesus. Stephen can't take you anywhere think of this we couldn't even sniff or feel or from a distance know the present without the blood of the lamb down to be flat God I brought it cause all is for your glory all is for your all is for your glory Come on, guys, say it out loud. And all is for your glory. That in all things you would have the first place. That in all things you may have. Come on, learn it with me if you don't know it. Everybody, get it out of here. All is for you. Yes. 
exalted in all. Yes, Lord. And you'll be seen as right, Bokey. And from our hearts we'll say, we're singing right now today that all is for your Catch me up in your story all my life for your glory. Catch me up, my God, in your story all my life for your glory. Catch me up in your story all my life. I got the chills, man. <laughs> Catch me up in your story all my life. Well, my God, my My God, my joy, your mighty light. Sing it. My God, my joy, your mighty light. My God, my joy, your catch me up. Come on, somebody, yeah. Catch me up in your story. Oh, my life, yeah, for your glory. Catch me up in your story, oh my life, for your glory. Catch me up in your story, oh my life, for your glory. Catch me up in your story, my God, my joy, my delight, my God, my joy. still two, two taglines. You're my delight. Here's my prayer song. Thank you, Corey and Ann Asbury. Put me anywhere. Put your glory deep in me. And I'll serve anywhere. Let me see your beauty. Your beauty put me anywhere. <laughs> put your glory in me. <laughs> I'll serve anywhere. <laughs> I'll serve. Yeah. Put me anywhere. Put your glory in me. And I'll serve anywhere. Let me see your beauty, beauty, put me, you guys got it then now, let me see your glory in me, and I'll serve anywhere, I'll serve anywhere, one more time, so put me anywhere, put your glory in me, and I'll serve anywhere. See your beauty, beauty, beauty. Put me anywhere. Put your glory in me. There it is. And I'll serve anywhere. I'll serve anywhere. I'll serve anywhere. You guys ready? This is the air I breathe. 
flying. Steve Hunt, he jumped on and said, this is my life song, kid. I said, what? He said, it's my life's song. I love it. This thing, it, it's got the presence all over it. Let's keep going with it. And, uh, oh, no, 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 no. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Sing it out again. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Guess what? It's now living inside of me. Yeah. 
right here this is my daily bread this is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very word your very word spoken to me it's living word this is my daily bread this is my daily bread oh. this is my daily Everybody ready? Hey. see the thumbs in the heart. It's, it's right on top of it. You guys, are you ready? Wow. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Yes, Lord. Well, we don't want to hurt your voice, Steve, so <laughs> I wish I could cry out louder too many times. Get ready. Everybody get your Bibles open to Ephesians chapter 4. Carla's going to give us the title. She's going to give us the uh, commentary on this from the voice translation. But man, let's really pay attention. Divine revelation is upon us. Yeah. Ephesians part 1, verses 1 through 16. The fivefold offices of the Lord and the end result of Jesus' work. The body of Christ oh. and walking in the fullness of spiritual maturity Woo. in Christ. My God. Now that Paul has described the new world as God would have it, he urges believers to live out their callings with humility, patience, and love, to walk as Jesus walked. These are the ways of Jesus. Paul encourages them to do whatever it takes to hold on to the unity that binds people together in peace. He does not ask them to create that unity. This has already been accomplished through the work of the Rescuer and His Holy Spirit. Rather, he calls believers to guard that unity, a more modest but no less significant task because that unity is founded on God's oneness and work in the world. So the Keystone Scriptures, I mean, all of it is, but hear it to get our hearts settled in in case you came on the stream a little bit late today. Verses 10 through 14. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens. 
that he might fill all things. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then he himself, Jesus Christ himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints. Hear it, you guys. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Wow. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. That is so huge. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and then the knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man status, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So here again, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the fullness of the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Carla, pray for us. We ask for the mind of Christ today. As we look at your scripture, give us a fuller understanding of what it is you did for us in being crucified for us before the foundations of the world. Lord, that we could see from the beginning of time to the end of time what is your will and your way through this vehicle called mankind. Verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, I encourage you, to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you, live a life that is worthy of the calling He has graciously extended. Be humble gentle, be patient, tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love, make every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit has already created, with peace binding you together. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Wow. And the Passion says, As a prisoner of the Lord, I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank given to you in your divine calling. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another. Aramaic literally means stretching love that covers, especially toward those who may try your patience. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. Where do we begin, you guys? How do I sing the magnificent truth and revelation of these first three verses? I'll try it like this. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Walk worthy of the calling to which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing up one another in love bearing up one another in love 
love, bearing up one another in love. Do it again, yeah. Walk worthy of the calling for which you were called. Walk worthy of the calling for which you were called by the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. Oh, walk worthy of the calling for which you were called. Walk worthy of the calling by which you were called, yeah. With all loneliness, with all gentleness, yeah. With all loneliness of heart, yeah. With all gentleness, with long suffering, Bear one another up with this stretching, covering love. Bear one another up with this stretching, this covering love of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Well, then keep the unity of the Holy Spirit. Keep the unity of the Holy Spirit. Keep the unity of the Holy Spirit, oh, keep the unity of the Holy Spirit, Paul said, keep the unity of the Holy Spirit, Paul said, keep the unity of the Holy Spirit, yeah, oh, be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Spirit. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of... So from the passion, be careful to guard the sweet harmony. Be careful to guard the sweet harmony. Be careful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you. In the bonds of... I'm going to sing it one more time. Stay with me. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. The bonds of peace in the bonds of his Shalom is in that awesome. Are you kidding? Wow. Help us, Lord. And then verses 4 and 5 and 6. There's one body and one spirit. So just as you were called in one hope of your calling, there's one Lord, there's one faith, and there's one baptism. <laughs> one God and Father of us all, who is above all, <laughs> and through all and in all. Listen, he didn't want to leave anything out. He wanted to make sure everything was covered. So this is just the New King James, but I love this. Hear this again. You see, there's one body and one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism there is to. One God, one Father of us all, who is above all, through all, and in all. Yeah, He's above all, through all, and in you all. Yeah, He's above it all, and through it all, and in you all. Yeah, we're going to sing it in the way. One Lord, one faith, one baptism for us all. Being one body and one spirit, as you were called, you were all called into the same glorious hope. Here's the passion, the hope of divine destiny. Stop right there. Wow. You got to get this. And we were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. 
divine destiny is in us and before us all divine destiny divine destiny well one body one spirit as you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny divine destiny of divine de divine destiny wow Woo! verse 5 for the Lord God is one and so are we for we share in one faith and one baptism and one father and the passion says he is the perfect father of oh. really yeah really and he is the one father of us all, the perfect father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. You see, he's a good, good father, as the song stated. But it goes further and says, he's the perfect Abba, heavenly father. Somebody say amen. Verses 7 and 8, Carla. So to set this up. The scriptures tell us that Christ was slain before the foundations of the world. So this was God's plan all along. It wasn't plan B. It was God's plan from the very beginning. And at the point of, of uh, Adam and Eve's fall from grace, he instituted um, blood covenants with his people as he walked with them. We see the first one with Cain and Abel where Abel offered a blood sacrifice and Cain didn't. We see again that God himself instituted a blood covenant with Abraham. And in a dream, he, he slayed all these animals before him and then called Abraham to sacrifice his own only son and the, and the son of promise and then gave him the substitute on the mountain. And then when God's people were led into captivity in Egypt for 400 years and he heard their cry, he set it up for their deliverance through Moses to bring them out. And before he did, he instituted the covenant of the Passover where we see the perfect, perfect representation of the blood sacrificed of the future Christ. Wow. Prior to that, man couldn't be judged. There was no law to judge them by they couldn't be judged. Heaven was pure and nothing could enter that other than Enoch who God took because he was pure. And so he had to purify and he had to set it up. It was all by faith. Hebrews tells us everything was by faith. All of these people lived by faith before God and it was counted to them for righteousness. But then judgment came and God gave them an annual representation of how they could apply their faith in something that was going to happen in a future time in a future place that that sacrificial lamb would be slain for them and they did it once a year and they did it by faith and when they died they couldn't go to heaven heaven was still pure and they were only covered so they went to a place called Abraham's bosom. Oh man. It was the a compartment dead. of hell yeah. or where the righteous dead were held. It's where the Catholics get their concept of purgatory. And it was there that they were held. The souls of their of, of those people were held wow. in a compartment of hell, not a place of torture or torment, but just a place of holding. But when the perfect sacrifice came, and Christ was sacrificed. Perfect sacrifice. And that day in time and space, when everything changed, and judgment wasn't based on the law any longer. It's based on the righteous sacrifice of the Holy Son of God. So now, in light of that, we can go to verse 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive 
and gave gifts to men. He went to this compartment of hell called Abraham's bosom and he presented himself before them and they said, yes, this is the Lamb of God. My faith has not been in vain. I kept the sacrifice. I kept it in faith that that one day this would come and this is the day. This God has given to each of us grace in full measure according to the anointed's gift. As the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he put captivity in chains, and in his triumph, he gave gifts to the people. Oh, my God. Ah. To help us understand, when he ascended on high, Jesus led captivity captive. All of the Old Testament saints went to paradise in the center of the earth, hell on one side and paradise on the other with a divide between the two. Remember the rich man who called out to Abraham to send Lazarus to give him a drop of water ones with him, and gifts were given to men. He ascended means that he returned to heaven after he had first descended from the heights of heaven even to the lower regions, namely the earth. The same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the heights of heaven in order to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. Okay, I'm calling a timeout. Oh, my Lord. I hope you got most of that. You may not have got all of it, but we're going to linger for a minute. We're, we're on to something giant. And we need the help of the Holy Spirit. The last part, the same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the heights of heaven. And this is what he did in order to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. Selah. And as Carla's reading, and by the way, most of that was from her heart. She didn't have that pre-written. There was a little paragraph or two in here that I put, but I said, could you just share your heart on that? And we're singing in our time out. We have a little time out. You are exalted. The King is exalted on high, and I will praise you. You are exalted, ever exalted, and I will praise your name. Sing it out. Well, and you are the Lord, and forever shall reign heaven and earth they'll rejoice in your holy name you are exalted the king I got chills man yeah this is our worship time out you are the Lord and you are the Lord and for Come on, let's do it again from the beginning. Jesus owns this dream. (laughs) It's led by the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Yes, that is right. And you are exalted. The King is exalted on high. And I will praise you. You are exalted, forever exalted. And I will praise your name. Well, for you are the Lord, and forever your truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in your The king is exalted. <laughs> you are the Lord, and you are my Lord. And forever your truth shall reign. Heaven and earth. 
rejoice in your holiness. Where make wise orators. I'm looking for those today in America. Where are the shepherds and teachers who are wise orators? We go to verse 12 and 13. And it's for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that God's people would be thoroughly equipped to minister and build up the body of the Anointed One. These ministries will continue until we are all unified in faith and filled with the knowledge of the Son of God, till we stand mature in His teachings and fully formed in the likeness of the Anointed, our liberating King. Wow. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Just a little side note here. It's not their responsibility to do the work. It's their responsibility to equip God's people to do the work. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. And the Passion says, And their calling is to nurture and prepare all of the holy believers to their own works of ministry. As they do, this will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until we all attain oneness into the faith, till we all experience the fullness of what it means to know the Son of God. And finally, we become one into a perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed in the, into the abundance of Christ. And we're going to sing it this way. With the equipping of the saints For the work of the ministry For the edifying of the body of Christ for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ sing it again yeah. for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. I can't be any clearer than that, neither can the word. One more time now, do the rest. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge, the Son of God. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Until we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God. And here it is, to a perfect man, to a new perfect man in the stature of the fullness of Christ, to the stature of the fullness of Christ, to the stature of the fullness of Christ, yeah. to the perfect new man. To the perfect man, until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. It says a perfect man, which is truly amazing still today to me after 45. Carl and I have been in ministry 45 years, been married 45 years. He said, I'm, I'm producing a perfect man that is going to rise up full of the measure of the stature of who I am, the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, let's finish part one, chapter four. We've got a few verses left. It says, verse 14 and 15. He said, if you're raising money for wells in Africa, you better be using it for that. Judgment day is coming. Verse 15. Instead, by truth spoken in love, we are to grow in every way into Christ Jesus, into him, the anointed one, the head. We are to grow in every way into him, the anointed one, the head. The complete Jewish Bible says, verse 15, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in every respect grow up into him who is the head and the Messiah. Hear it one more time. We will in every respect grow up into him who is the head, the Messiah. And then the passion finishes this way. You see, then all of our immaturity will end. Any day now, Lord. Then, then all of our immaturity will end and we will not be easily shaken by trouble nor led astray by novel teachings, by the false doctrines of deceivers who teach clever lies. Listen, man, you spend a lot of time in worship in the Word. You, you'll call that stuff. It'll be so apparent to you. And they're not carrying a spirit of humility while they're doing it anyway because they're arrogant with it. Verse 15, but instead we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. What? But instead, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we ex ex express the truth. All our direction and ministries will flow from Christ. Oh, all our direction and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him, the anointed head of his body, the church. One more time. All of our direction and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him, the anointed head of his body, the church. And for all those who believe that the gifts of the Spirit died with the apostles in the fivefold ministry, if you can show me a mature body of Christ, maybe we could agree with that statement. There's yeah, if they don't operate in the gifts of the Spirit, there's no such thing as maturity. Yeah, never failed. It said until. These things would go on until we all come to the fullness of Christ. Sorry, don't see it. But speaking the truth in love, here we go, speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head. Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. He joins and holds together the whole body with its ligaments providing the support needed so each part works to its proper design to form a healthy, growing and mature body that builds itself up in love. From him the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies, when each part is working properly, causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in unselfish love. And finally, the Passion says, For his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts. Every member has been given divine gifts. When he ascended on high, remember, he gave gifts unto men has been given, every member has been given divine gifts to continue to the growth of all. And these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body. We are built up and made perfect in love, of bringing the whole thing with the covenant and the law back to full circle now under this new covenant, which says he set us free from the law and sin and 
of sin and death, the law that brought judgment on mankind. Yes. You are set free by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You know, that one that he wrote on your heart the day you received him. Wow. From whom the whole body joined and knit together. From whom your whole body, Lord, joined and knit together. Every joint supplies were joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. According to the working of your spirit, every part does its share by the effective working of your Holy Spirit. Every part, every part, every part does it share, causing growth of the body of Christ. This causes the growth of the body of Christ for the edifying of a sword. We're made perfect in your love, we am built together. We're built together. We're built together. Made perfect in your love. We're fit together. Built up together. Made perfect in your love. Made perfect in your love, we are fitted together. We are built up together by your Holy Spirit. Check it out. Made perfect in your love, made perfect by your love. Made, isn't this awesome? We've had a great day now today, my God, this dream. Oh. It was so, so good to feel overwhelmed by the word. I go, oh, Lord, are you kidding? Whoa, shh. what is Paul laying it? He's laying it out line by line. I go, whoa, these are big lines. He's laying out the truth of it. And the Ephesians were super blessed by a letter Paul wrote while he was still a prisoner. He was a prisoner because he preached and taught the power of the living Christ. What a day, guys. How many enjoyed it? How many got blessed? If we're going to go back and review some things, I'll do a little bit of that tomorrow. As we do part two of chapter four of Ephesians, staying with the deep worship. Wow. Lives in Tuscaloosa, has been watching and said, I was supposed to send this offering in January, <laughs> but here it is by hand in April. I said, no, it's, it's all good, man. But we ask you to support us, partner with us, the sending of the deep worship of his presence to every tribe, tongue, and nation. It's upon us. We're doing it every day. I truly believe that. I know it in my spirit. And then the narration of the word of God, Isaiah 55. As the rain and snow comes down from heaven, dude, straight up. The word of God got returned void. It will accomplish the purpose for which we send it out. So I love you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow afternoon at 4, part 2 of Ephesians chapter 4. God bless you guys. Hallelujah.